everyone. Today we're going to be talking about one of my most favorite projects, Islamic Tile Designs. Islamic Tile Designs grew out of the need for a decorative form of art that wasn't representative of the real world as Islam forbids making any graven images or images of people. Due to this, the artists began an extensive foray into researching geometry and creating a set of rules for their elaborate tile designs that lined the walls of their places of worship, called mosques. Here you can see lots of different examples of Islamic tile designs. The materials needed for this project are a sheet of paper to sketch your ideas, a grid drawing, pen, pencil, a little piece of foam, you guys can get this out of a foam plate, some tape if you guys have it, markers, or watercolor paint. To begin, what you guys are going to end up doing is trace your printing plate on top of your paper at least four times, come up with the four sketches, and then once you have those sketches complete, you guys are going to end up transferring them to your printing plate. Make sure that you guys are focused on just lines, bold lines for your designs. printing matrix complete. I have taped down my grid down to the table and then I've also taped my final paper down to the table. This is where I'm going to print all of my prints. And now I'm starting to print my final series of prints. So in this case you can go about it two different ways. In this example that I'm showing right now you see me coloring lots of different sections different colors. You can either do that or I'm about ready to show another example where I do two series run prints and you guys are going to see the difference. So in this one, I have all of my colors ready and I only need to print once. I'm adding lots of details, but I'm also making sure that with this design, the center of mine always gets rotated. So I have each of these tiles as a set of four. So, in knowing that, on the back of my printing plate, I have put a little dot in the center so that I know whenever I'm putting down my printing plate, when I flip it upside down, I make sure that that dot is always in the center of my square of four so that I can keep rotating my printing plate or my matrix to make sure that it's in the correct position. With the second run of prints, I am doing opposites. So instead of doing a set of four, I'm doing a set of two. And I know that, again, I make a mark in the center of mine where these two tiles connect. Just to remind myself whenever it gets flipped over, that these two sections always connect at this specific place. You notice that I also do a purple, and then I rotate my second tile as a different color in blue. Once I fill in all the rest of the squares in our grid, then I go back on my printing plate, my matrix, and then I go back with my ballpoint pen after my plate is clean, and I fill in another section. So this is that second step if you guys decide to do that. What you push down this time is the color that you have already printed will still be available to see. If you guys do not touch something with ballpoint pen, then it will be the new color you are going to print on top of it. So again, this is called a two-run reduction print. With that complete, all I have to do is add that final layer of color. And again, just alternating how I rotate my matrix just to make sure that the prints line up correctly. With this complete, now you guys are going to go to the bottom right-hand corner and sign your name because you've just finished your first series of prints. Congratulations for sticking with it. Now, here's my final example, and then you can see some other examples from other students. While it is tedious and very time consuming, these prints always turn out amazing every time, as long as you dedicate just a little bit of extra effort to completing your work. Now, what did you guys learn as you guys were working through this project? What was difficult and what did you do to overcome it? Awesome job and thank you guys so much for sticking with it.